In this video, we're going to take a look at using the Shure SM7B with the Rode AI1 audio interface. You might be getting into audio and wanting a nice podcasting or live streaming or recording setup and be looking to evaluate this gear. If you're anything like me, you want to find a video with the exact gear that you're using, and that's really what we aim to do on this channel. We show a million different combinations of microphones and audio interfaces and audio mixers, so you can see exactly how to set it up, how it sounds, how to get the best results, and answer any frequently asked questions that you may have about this combination. First of all, pricing does change all the time, so if you are looking for current, up-to-date pricing or specs, check out the links down in the description for anything that you see in this video. You'll find everything here from a variety of online retailers to make sure that you are getting the best price possible if you are looking to buy anything that you see in this video for your own setup. Now, for the purposes of this video today, you are listening to the Rode NT1 5th Gen microphone connected to the Rodecaster Pro 2 audio mixer. There's no post-processing or anything like that. I'm just recording straight into that. So if you are wanting to compare the NT1 to the SM7B, once we get it all set up, you can do that as well. You'll see this logo up in the top corner indicating that you're listening to the Rode NT1 right now. Of course, once we get the SM7B all set up, that'll switch to a picture of the SM7B so that you know what you're listening to at any given time since we have to go back and forth as we connect everything and set it up for you. Now, when you buy the Shure SM7B and the Rode AI1, you get a couple things with it. For the Shure SM7B, you get just the microphone and an additional windscreen for it. You don't get anything else. With the Rode AI1, you get the audio interface and a couple USB cables. So if you're USB-A or USB-C to your computer, you get those cables included as well. But aside from that, you're kind of left on your own. And that's really why we made this video to show you everything else that you need in order to get the setup going and how to get the best settings possible. Now, first of all, you're going to need some type of a mic stand. You have, really have two options. There's these inexpensive, cheap table stands. They work super well. The only downside to these things is that they do take up table space. So if you're on a desk when you need keyboard or notepad or something like that, these don't always work well. The other option that you have here is to use some type of articulating boom arm. If you want links to the one that we have, it's linked down in the description below. But the benefits of this are obvious. You get free and clear space underneath and it does help absorb all those bumps and taps that come through the table, and it does isolate the microphone a little bit better to give you better quality in your recording. So let's connect the Shure SM7B to this boom arm right now. It's pretty straightforward. There's just a little screw here on the top of the SM7B, and it'll go right in. If you are using a boom arm with a different thread adapter, you do get the thread adapter that you need for it with the Shure SM7B, so you have no worries there. You can there's two universal sizes, then you get the adapter, so it'll fit no matter what boom arm you use. The only thing I would point out here is that you should be looking for a boom arm that's of high quality. I've done a bunch of reviews on this channel. There are some really expensive, like $20 boom arms that literally won't hold the weight of the Shure SM7B, so to be sure to keep that in mind. But most, you know, kind of over $50 boom arms do a pretty good job. Next, your recording will always sound horrible unless you have good mic placement doesn't matter what gear you use. If your microphone is too far away, you'll get a lot of room tone. And if your microphone is too close to you, it'll sound really boomy and bassy and full. With the Shure SM7B, I like to keep it within about a fist of my mouth, pointed right at it. I generally don't put the microphone right in front of my mouth. I like to have it off axis, about a fist away, pointed at my mouth, something like this. Mic positioning like this does a couple things. One, you're not breathing right into the diaphragm of the microphone. So it's not going to be as bassy or poppy and you're not going to get those P and B sounds. And two, since you are looking away from the microphone, you do generally get less breath noise and that type of thing as well. You may need to play with the microphone positioning a little bit based on your voice and your preferences and how you speak. But I found something like this works really well for me. Next, you're going to need some type of XLR cable. These are fairly universal and quality will vary depending on the manufacturer that you buy from. I do have a whole buyer's guide for XLR cable linked down in the description below. In this video, I am using the premium Mogami Studio Gold. These things are super expensive. They're kind of unnecessary. But I mean, if you're buying the Shure SM7B in a nice audio interface, some people can justify the price. There's nothing inherently wrong with going in with an Amazon Basics XLR cable. There's very, very minimal quality difference between it. But with these nice high-end studio quality cables, you do get better noise cancellation, better quality, better soldering, and better connectors that just fit perfectly every time. So you do get what you pay for, but sometimes if you're starting out, it can be tempting just to go for the cheap, inexpensive cables as well. So a generic XLR cable like this will just come with a male and a female end. 
you want to connect the female end to the top of your microphone. Then try to run the cable nice and neat. If you're going to be on camera especially, you want to have nice looking cable management so it always looks good. You're always judged by the neatness of your cables. Next, we can take the male end of the XLR cable and connect it right into the front of our audio interface. Should just click right in like that. Next, we commonly get asked how to actually record on your computer. For the purposes of this video and the purposes of showing you how everything's working, we're just using OBS. It's free software that you can use for streaming or recording. You can download it. I have a link down in the description below. But when you open it, it basically looks like this, and we need to add our audio source to it. So we're going to hit plus under sources, select audio input capture. We're going to put AI1, and then hit OK. Next, we're going to select the device is the Rode AI1, and we're going to hit OK. Now we see the AI1 listed here in OBS. This is exactly what I'm trying to do. Basically, what I wanted during this video is to show you the meter so you can see the level that we're recording at as well as hear it for yourself so you can see exactly what's going on with the computer. Now, in order to get this microphone sounding good, of course, you do need to turn up the input gain. The input gain here controls the preamp, and the job of the preamp here is to take this tiny, tiny microphone's level signal and boost it to something that's more appropriate for your computer recording. So as we turn this up here, you'll slowly see that where the meter is moving in OBS Studio. So now you're listening to the Shure SM7B for the first time. Now you can see here that we really want this to be in the yellow when we're speaking normally. You want it somewhere between minus 10 and minus 20 dB. We can get this other microphone out of the way just for now, just so you know that you're listening to the Shure SM7B. Now the theory of keeping this in the yellow here between minus 10 and minus 20 dB is pretty simple. You want your loudest moments to be at minus 10 and your more quieter moments at minus 20. That way, if you get exceptionally animated or something dynamic happens in your recording, you don't clip, peak, or distort. I'm going to show you what happens here if you turn up the gain too much and you pick and you clip, peak, or distort. So I'm going to turn this up here and keep speaking in the microphone. So right now it should be clipping. I'm at 100% on the preamp and it is completely distorted. I'm going to turn it back down now. So now that I turn the preamp back down to about 75%, you can see I'm peaking around minus 10 again. Now that data from the when I was peaking, clipping, and distorting is not recoverable. The recording is ruined. That is baked into the recording. The reason I did that is to demonstrate that you can't save the audio for that. That's why I want to peak at minus 10 and no louder. Zero is distorting. Minus 10 is exactly where you want to peak. So if you're using OBS Studio when you're speaking regularly, just keep it in the yellow section and you'll be fine. Now, a lot of people want to know if you need a cloud lifter or inline preamp, a dynamite or a FET head, some device like that with the AI1 when you're using the Shure SM7B. You can see here right now that I have my gain set to about 75% and I'm getting a good signal where I'm peaking at about minus 10 on the recording. This is absolutely perfect. I'm going to give you some things to look for in order to determine whether or not you need a cloud lifter. If you have bad mic positioning or if you're soft spoken, then you're going to find that your gain is turned up louder, you're getting more background noise, and it, you're not getting the level that you need on your computer. If that's you, first of all, you should try to improve your mic positioning, get that mic as close to your mouth as you're comfortable with without getting like touching your mouth. Again, just keep it within about a fist or so. And if you're still not getting the level that you need, if you're still not peaking at minus 10 dB, you can use an inline preamp. Now, in front of me right now, I just pulled out four examples of inline preamps. We have the Cloud Lifter, which is the most famous popular version of this, but there's also others. My favorite actually to use is the SD Electronics Dynamite, this red one here. I'll have links down to them in the description down below. But I'm just going to quickly show you how to use it with the setup just in case you need to do it on yours. I don't think you need it. I think the Rode AI1 gives the SM7B enough clean gain, but just for the purposes of making this video complete, I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay, so now I have the Rode NT1 here, just so you can hear me as I do all this. So I'm going to disconnect my XLR cable from my audio interface, and I want to connect this into the CloudLifter CL1. What we're looking to do here is connect this in line between the microphone and our audio interface. It's an inline preamp. So we connect our microphone to this. Now we need to connect the CloudLifter into our audio interface. There are a couple other things I'm going to show you here about this that are important to the setup. So first of all, let's connect the cloud lifter to the Rode AI1. 
Next, you're going to want to turn down your gain all the way down as if we haven't set it yet. Now, the cloud lifter doesn't work by magic. You need some sort of external power supply in order to power this device. And basically, what it's going to do, it's going to trade that external power for about 25 dB of clean gain. So, in order to power this, we need to turn on phantom power on the Rode AI-1. If you see here up in the top of this audio interface, it says P48 there. That stands for phantom power, 48 volts. In order to turn it on, you need to hold down your preamp, and that red light will come on. That means that it's now sending 48 volts of phantom power to the cloud lifter to power it properly. Next, let's turn up the gain. And as we look over at our computer here, let's keep turning it up again until we're in that sweet spot of minus 10 to minus 20 dB that we were before. Now, if you look at the audio interface here, you can see what the cloud lifter did. Previously, we were set at about 75% on the input gain, and now we're set at about 55%, and we're getting the same level or recording on the computer. That's what it does. I don't think this is necessary with the Rode AI-1. I don't think we were getting any meaningful amount of hiss or background static or recording when we were driving the preamp at 75%. But if when you're doing this, you're up at 95 or 90%, you might want to consider something like this. I'm going to undo this all now because I don't think it's necessary. Okay, so now we're back to just the SM7B. I took the cloud lifter out of the equation. The gain here is set at about 75% and the phantom power is turned off. Do I recommend the Rode AI-1 with the Shure SM7B? Yes, I think the Rode AI-1 does a good job with the Shure SM7B. As demonstrated in this video, it can give you enough clean gain to record around minus 10 or minus 20, somewhere in that yellow threshold in OBS, and you get a good quality signal with very little noise. So there's no distracting hiss, hum, pops, or anything like that. And if you have good mic positioning and you're speaking at a reasonable volume, I don't think you need any type of inline preamp, mic booster, mic activator, or anything like that. So in that fact, I think the Rode AI-1 is a good fit for the Shure SM7B dynamic microphone. If you have any questions about anything I missed in this video, please leave a comment down in the comment section below. Again, if you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that you've seen here, we have links down in the description below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.